What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Max L's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Fans Toys 55B tape set. They don't, uh, I guess, bother naming, or maybe they do, I guess, on the cards. Yeah, Eject is Erase, Ramhorn is Amplifier, and Steeljaw is Loudspeaker. That'll be the last time I ever mention that, and I won't ever commit it to memory because I don't speak fluent third party. It's interesting which ones do kind of stand out, though, right? Like, I feel like Quake Wave is one of those that kind of became a thing. Uh, Feral Rex would be another. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about these tapes. Obviously, we've already looked at the rewind mold, but we're going to look at this one anyway. Maybe I'll show the reverse transformation of it, and we'll look at the other two. I got these from Nick the Toy Guy. His email will be in the description. He's a great asset, especially if you live on the East Coast, because a lot of these places, uh, these American distributors are kind of Midwest or West Coast. There's not many of us over here doing it. So I highly recommend them. That being said, we are going to take a look, but we got to look at accessories first. They come with three plastic tapes boxes to hold the tapes in, if you so desire. Um, you know, opens up. I have one that has like a yellow sticker on it. I'm not sure why. And it has that little, maybe is Steel Jaw specifically supposed to go in there? Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I thought it was interesting. They're fine. So Eject comes with one pistol. Uh, which is at least uh, nice that I don't have to worry about it being missing one like I thought in the when I did the other uh, video. Uh, but I do wish he had come with two, you know? What's the, what's the big problem? Give us two. But yeah, he does come with one. It's chromed out in gold, looks good enough, and he'll hold that just fine. And of course, gimmicks-wise, uh, they'll fit in Blaster's chest, as you would expect. And then you can eject them at your will. And then you get to the tapes themselves. So we'll kind of go one at a time. This one, the steel jaw one, I'm actually having a hard time getting it to stay stuck together. Um, this piece here in particular, it pegs in there, but uh, I'm having a hard time getting it to stay. Otherwise, looks fine. I actually think that this one is, is overall my favorite. It has a couple of the little like sculpted line pieces in there that I think does it a lot of justice. And... Um, and it's you know it's 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 bloody okay right so the other two are kind of like just squares you know they sacrifice all of the kind of tape aesthetics in order to get the cartoon aesthetics in rob in robot mode which i think is the right choice if you're going to sacrifice one or the other but i do kind of miss it especially in tape mode but you know I, they won't be in tape mode for very long actually i'm not sure what, what mode they're going to be in here the old skull face residence but maybe we'll talk about that in final thoughts but yeah um the blue looks magnificent on this like this is fans toys paint that i adore you know it's the fans toys paint that's missing on cliff jumper it's the fans toys paint that's missing on blaster um but it is here and i i do appreciate it and then we have the ram horn which is probably the most basic looking and um you know the kind of weakest link i would say amongst the three but it is nice that like on these chrome pieces here that make up the side weapons that they painted the tape side at least that's a you know that's a little bit of effort there i dig that um yeah and that's them and that's them next to tiger tracks all right so let's get them transformed we'll start with steel jaw because that's my favorite um of the autobot tapes well, i guess aside from rewind um just from IDW, but let's uh, bring down these legs. You know, these are rear legs, and that will also allow you to manipulate them a bit to get the tail out. If you pull the legs out to the side, it will activate. He's easy for me to say. The uh, double hinge that they're on, and then you want to rotate back on the double hinge, and it's, it's it's not great um but it's this little notch there that's going to grab a hold of that bar and it doesn't like tab or anything it's just that's just what it is uh bring the legs down to get them out of the way so that you can start to manipulate his weapons which you can pull down and flip over and then grab the wing and peel it back so same on this side Pull down, flip over, grab the wing, peel it back. And then we have uh, just the, the front to do. So we're going to open up the main, flip that up. That'll let you get the lion head out. 
It'll also allow you to peel the front paws down, the paws, double paws, and then you can rotate these. So these, you kind of have to start, they're also on a double hinge. You kind of have to start at the bottom hinge and then flip up in order for it to clear properly, um, which actually uh, ate me up a little bit when I was kind of fumbling my way through it. Because it has to fit underneath all this there um, and then you got to clear this space here for the next step so we're gonna do the same thing on this side and uh, these double hinges are a little tight but you just gotta get them where you need them and clear uh, the semicircle there and then you take the main fold the main around the head and these two pegs here slide down into uh, those semicircles, and that's what keeps it all uh, together. And it's a bit of a pain. I'll do it off camera because it's just like, you know, there. There's one. Let's see if I can't finagle. No. Anyway, at least you got to see what one looks like. Uh, oh, and then that's the one, obviously, that the, the double hinge collapsed because you want this piece out. And it's just frustrating um, to get it lined up properly. And these joints are really stiff here. Uh, so we'll try one more time, shall we? We'll give it one more go. All right. Yeah, no. Uh, let's move on. All right, so while we're on the topic of problems, Ramhorn has his own assortment of them as well, at least in my opinion. So we're going to start off with uh, bringing these down here, the, the hind legs. And the toes move as well. <clears throat> the issue is <clears throat> getting these. This panel here is also connected here. It's all one piece, right? And it needs to shift down into the right and the other one down into the left. And it's just a matter of getting it to go. If you see where this pin is, the whole piece slides on that pin. So if you get a spudger and you just sort of manipulate it there, uh, I feel like that's the best way to do it. And then, you know, you can sort of sort the feet out any time that you want. And then you have the front, or I guess we can get these up as well. These fold up and then flip out on both sides. We'll just work front to back, or back to front, rather. And then the front legs shift down and split open on double hinges. While you're here, get the tail out and the head out. Clear the head between the kind of front shoulder pieces and then there's another flap here that comes up and then tabs in on this opposite side where you see the uh, female let me just get these out of the way for now there and then your your golden pony boy. I'll flip those up and uh, we'll clean them up and move on to uh, eject. And then we'll go backwards for him so it's covered on my channel. So spin the head around 180, tuck that in, flip the fists in, collapse the waist, which is a bit of a bear, collapse the arms in, and then bring the arms up top 
so that the blues sit together. The feet sit back up inside of the calf. And you have to split the back of the thigh as well. And I would get these chest pieces halfway open uh, before you go committing to anything else. And then these come up and encapsulate the arm. Do I not have this foot right? Does this foot need to be spun around the other way? Probably. All right, let's see. Yep, it does. Okay, so I'll fix that on the other side. And then you can close that flap. So this foot, I just tucked it up, but it needs to come all the way out. Spin 180 and then tuck back in. And then open up this thigh, tuck in, tuck in, and then you close that. And uh, that's the reverse transformation. So now they're both checked off. Now let's take a look at them. All right, so let's take a quick look. We're going to fly through this guy because he's basically the same as as Rewind, right? Uh, once again, that metallic blue is absolutely stunning. This is the way that fans' toys should be painting their figures. This is what they're really, really, really good at. And we're not, we haven't been getting it a lot recently. I think had this blaster had this sort of detail. You know, and like there's sculpted detail in here too. Like this is, I, I do love this mold. I think they did a great job with it. The head, um, the face sculpt. Decent eyes are painted, face is painted, uh, helmet's painted, fully painted. And it's on a swivel where it hinges to transform. You can get an upward movement as well and a little bit of a downward movement, to be fair. Shoulders are basically a ball peg that come into a hinge. Using both, you can get the arm up past 90 degrees. Looks a little wonky, but you can get it. Plus 360 around, plus the slightest butterfly joint on the ball peg. Double jointed elbow. That gets you a pretty good range. Uh, no bicep swivel, wrist hinge in and out due to transformation, no uh, abdominal articulation whatsoever. Then we have the hips. We have die cast in this figure. The hips are much better tolerance than Rumble and Frenzy, which was the same with Rewind. You can get out to there, forward and back to there, thigh swivel, single hinge knee that gets you 90 degrees, ankle tilt up. Ankle tilt down and the slightest bit of a rocker, but it is there. And the gold metallic paint looks great as well. Like, um, I think this this mold is still successful. I think that this is really well done, honestly. You got the gaps in the back, but I think it's forgivable given, you know, the, the transformation of it all and the size. Now we'll move on to the new ones. So the steel jaw, we have, it's fully painted, first of all, but then the eyes are painted in addition to that. And then we have... A hinge here for the mouth that does open and close on a pinned hinge there and then the whole head you can get a little bit up and a good bit down and a swivel uh, but it's a little tricky because you got to get around the main but you can get it front shoulders hinge at the top hinge at the elbow hinge at the ankle and that's that's going to be what you're limited to that's going to be the same on the other side back hips Hinge, hinge at the elbow, and hinge at the ankle. So same articulation there. And then the tail, you can get some wiggle, um, but no waggle. And, uh, I mean, that's it for this guy. I'll talk a little bit about the aesthetics. Um, him and Ramhorn both sacrifice, like, a lot of gappiness. They don't fill in quite as well as I would have expected them to. Um, once again, I think some of it is forgiven due to the size. But, uh, you know, they're not... They're not. They're they're far from perfect aesthetically, to be fair, but um, I think they'll do, and I don't think anybody will do much better in this scale, honestly. And lastly, uh, Ramhorn, who always makes me think of my daughter. Um, she was very young. She wanted a third party Ramhorn. Um, so the head is on a ball peg here. You get a little bit down. The neck is on a hinge that helps with the down. Using both, you can get all the way up. You get a swivel on that ball peg. The eye is painted white and black for the uh, pupil. The jaw is articulated, but the range of motion is very limited. But it is articulated. Um, very plain figure. 
uh, I think this could have benefited from some accents or some sculpted detail. Like, look, this is what I'm talking about. Like, both of these look G1, right? Look at the sculpted detail in Steel Jaw's shoulder versus Ram Horns. Like, that's the difference. It's just this little stuff. It just makes all the difference. This looks boring to me. This looks interesting. Both look G1. You know, as at least as much G1 as the other does. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, okay, shoulders. We have a hinge and a hinge at the elbow and then a hinge at the ankle. Same for the rear, so much like steel jaw and then the tail gets some wiggle, no waggle. And once again, this has like a lot of like hollow broken up parts, but I actually think that this one covers down a bit better than, um, than steel jaw does. But in, in the same way, I don't think it kind of looks as visually interesting as steel jaw. But uh, yeah, there he is. Panel covers, once again, interesting. Fans always been doing more of that recently. But, uh, you know, it's fine. This one's my, probably my least favorite across the board. And there they are with Tiger Tracks. And there they all are with Blaster and Rewind. Um, and I think, you know, I think it's a good looking set. I actually think Blaster's the weakest link of the set, to be honest. Uh, Blaster and Ramhorn. But I, I actually, I, I'm, I quite like these three. There's the Steel Jaw from MMC versus the Steel Jaw from Fans Toys. I mean, imagine if the MMC one had the paint love that the Fans Toys one had. You'd have a pretty perfect product. However, looking at them side by side, this does look a little bit oranger than I um, picked up on initially, which is interesting. It doesn't really bother me, but I, I know that some people that are really into like the you know hyper tune aesthetics and stuff, um, I think that this is probably not the right color. Interesting. Like I said, it doesn't bother me, but I wish this guy had the, the paint love that that one did, but I wish this guy had the kind of everything that this one does personally and there's eject with his kfc brother and uh you know the kfc one held up for a long time and I, I i still like the blaster a fair bit but i think these fans toys robot tapes eject and rewind are just really 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 well done specifically for their size but very well done so this is my movie shelf where i currently am housing the fans toys blaster and tapes um it's a little more crowded than I would prefer it to be. But I think it sneaks by. I think it's okay. Now, this is my proper season two shelf where my proper blaster and tapes will be. Just waiting on the two other ones from MMC and then um, this should this one should be good to go. I, I actually put the Fans Toys one in here. I tried to swap it out and it just, it ended up kind of, it's too big and too much of a centerpiece and it was just too weird looking it ended up bringing the the kind of look of the shelf down a fair bit um but like i don't know you know we've been talking about fans toys paint a bit today and like look at that beachcomber he doesn't have it you know he doesn't have it but eject does you know so i just like to see that kind of stuff now if i don't end up keeping my fans toys one in there on the movie shelf I'll probably end up moving them in here and then having them face off, you know, the second sound wave and his tapes on this side, you know, which is the only other option, really. Now, look, I think I can make an argument that I should get three points for this, but I'm going to let it slide. Final thoughts, we'll start with the negatives. There are some joint tolerance issues here. It was really hard to engage the slider on the chest of eject for me to elongate specifically at first, but it's no walk in the park now. Same for some of the joints, like the shoulder joints and stuff on ram horn and steel jaw. Just some sort of build inconsistencies and deficiencies across the board. More so directly associated with assembly, more so than materials. There's articulation limitations. Obviously, no abdominal articulation on eject there's also no bicep swivel and stuff like that that actually ends up becoming more problematic when you go to pose no rockers on the ankles for any of the animals i think ram horn specifically suffers from a lack of sculpt and there's a fair amount of hollowness on all of them like i don't really that doesn't really bother me necessarily but if it were another company i would definitely point it out so i'm pointing it out here as well you know i would give hasbro hell for that you know so it's good for the goose as they say and i wish that eject came with two guns it does really feel like a cheap move same for rewind before just staying consistent there as well
Positives wise, they're painted beautifully. All three of them, top to bottom, with that specific type of fans toys paint that I definitely appreciate. Love it, love it, love it. Love to see it. I think the chrome detailing has come through nicely, and I like that all of their weapons included. It kind of ties them all together. The materials feel great. There's die cast in it, and the die cast is utilized well, unlike the Rumble and Frenzy, which were like a loose nightmare. They definitely learned their lesson there and continue to make smaller figures with die cast work. I love the Eject Rewind mold. I absolutely love it. I think it's great. I think it's fun. I think it looks good. I think it's painted well. It has sculpted details. It still looks very G1. It's fun to transform. It's uh, it's it's fantastic. Fantastic. I think the steel jaw kind of gets by. I think the ram horn kind of falls a bit short in general. But I think the reason why the steel jaw gets by is because like there's some character that comes through in it. So they are a recommend for me. I think the ram horn is fine, and I think the other two are good. And actually, I think the eject is great, even for its shortcomings. But yeah, if you're in for this scale for your tapes, I recommend recommend it. If I had to pick one set of tapes, it would definitely be the MMC. And that's how I feel about it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.